He's been on the show a few times. He is a two-time Emmy Award winner for writing for Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. He's also been on Conan and Late Night with Seth Meyers, and I'm so thrilled to have him back. Please give it up for Josh Gondelman. So here's my story. I have been married for just over one year, which is very exciting for me. Thank you. I, thank you. I want this to be a, a, a lovely story, so I, but I have to start by saying one year into marriage, I will tell you about the hardest part first. And the hardest part of being married for one year is I still haven't figured out how to invite one friend to hang out with me and my wife without sounding like I'm proposing a threesome. <laughs> I just haven't mastered it. I screw it up every time. And I always realize it at the same point in the conversation. I'll just be talking to a friend like, yeah, totally, we're on for tonight. But, you know, it's Saturday. The bars are going to be packed. Who needs it? Why don't you just come over to our place? We'll hang out on the couch, have a couple glasses of wine. Let's see where the evening takes us. You know what? I'm hearing myself, and we got to delete each other's numbers because... Or I could invite six more people over, or we could have sex. I think those are the only <laughs> options we've got. But what I really want to talk to you guys about tonight, I, I'm here to tell you about the second best moment of my wedding, which is, it's a weird thing to say, but the best part of the wedding was not a good story. The best moment was my wife and I found a quiet place after the ceremony uh, where, you know, where nobody else was around. We were so many friends and family swirling around. We found just a quiet place where we could be alone, and we whispered to one another our social security numbers. Just <laughs> traditional Jewish wedding. Just <laughs> you break a glass, you whisper the social security numbers. L'chaim, raise a chair, it's the whole thing. That's the best part. That was, it was like very, it was immensely personal and touching and beautiful. The second best part of my wedding, that's, that's the stuff. That's what's worth talking about. The second best moment of my wedding was the moment my wife and I shared in the middle of the dance floor with the Michael Jackson impersonator. <laughs> and I can feel in this room there's like a little skepticism where people are thinking like, why doesn't every wedding have a Michael Jackson impersonator? <laughs> And you would be right to ask that question. It makes one out of one weddings incredible, in my experience. <laughs> we didn't set out trying to have a Michael Jackson impersonator at our wedding. We aren't geniuses. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't architecture, it's serendipity. That's what happened. We hired a DJ. And he was, uh, he's the guy, we have, a, we have a fat little pug whom we adopted because we're angels walking the earth. And, <laughs> The guy that the the guy that we that walked our dog a couple days a week was um, he's also a DJ and his regular DJ gig got canceled because the venue semi burned down. So he was needing DJ semi. It didn't burn all the way down. Like there was it was still a thing, but they got a, the inside was burned down. Like we all know people like that. <laughs> I've never said that part before, but I stand by it. I don't renege upon it. So he was also a DJ, and his, his regular gig was canceled. So he said, do you know of any DJ gigs? And we said, we have a wedding. <laughs> and so we, we met up with him to talk about who was going to speak at the wedding and what the playlist was, was uh, going to be like to, to the best of our desires. And then... At the end of the meeting, as cool and smooth as I've ever heard anyone make any offer, business-wise, he said, you know, in addition to my DJ services, I, uh, I also do Michael Jackson. Would you like me to do that at the wedding? And I said, I don't know what that means, but absolutely 100% I want that to happen. Because whatever it is, it's going to be awesome. I don't know whether you're going to dangle a baby over a balcony or turn a backyard into an amusement park, bring a bunch of zombies back to life. Whatever it is, unless it's the one thing, it's going to be amazing. So, <laughs> 
Just one thing. <laughs> so we kind of forgot about it. I mean, we didn't forget about it, but it wasn't top of mind with all the rest of the wedding planning. Like, I knew in the back of my head it was going to happen, but it wasn't, I hadn't, it wasn't part of the, I didn't consider it. <laughs> so, cut to the day of the wedding, and it's midway through the reception, and the DJ steps out from behind the table where all his equipment is, and he puts on a red leather jacket <laughs> and a silver rhinestone glove. And we have told no one this is going to happen. <laughs> this is like our gift to the guests. Like they brought us a toaster. We're sending them home with a memory that will last a lifetime. Even trade in my book. So here's how he starts. He goes, ladies and gentlemen, I have a surprise for the bride and the groom. I told them about this a few weeks ago, but I'm pretty sure they've forgotten by now. And I was like, does this guy think that I forgot? <laughs> when he told me he was going to impersonate Michael Jackson at my wedding. <laughs> the single most memorable sentence anyone has ever spoken to me. <laughs> Including by this point in the evening, I do, by the way. <laughs> it's a sentence that's been haunting my dreams for the last month. <laughs> and he thought it had just floated out of my brain. So he's positioned my friend Will behind the DJ table, which I think en entitles me to a slight rebate on his DJ services, which... This is a complaint for the Yelp review, not you fine people, but. <laughs> he says, Will, hit it. Will hits it. <laughs> Billie Jean comes on full blast, which is a great song, but not for a wedding. <laughs> More of a paternity test anthem, if you know it. <laughs> Even if my wife had been named Billie Jean, it would be an inappropriate song for that moment. But it doesn't matter. He's so good. He's got the hands. He's got the feet. I know this isn't what the hands and the feet look like, but it's the best you guys are going to get from me. He's so good. The, all the guests gather around him in a tight circle, and the crowd is lukewarm at best, I will say. That is... A sad but true point. Part of it was on him. Part of it was his fault. I hate to assign blame, but that's true. Part of it was on him. Like, he didn't look a lot like Michael Jackson. Like, he was black, which didn't help. Because um, a crowd full of old white people, they're picturing new Mike, not Mike Classic. You gotta read the room, dude. If he'd put on a black leather jacket, fake goatee, and done Billy Joel, my mother would have thrown her underpants at him. My father would have had a heart attack, ack, 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 ack. Everybody get that? Who's going to get that? You ought to know by now. That's a second Billy Joel reference because I'm a professional and I want you to enjoy your night. So here's the moment. He dances over to me and my wife. And he's put these two plastic Party City fedoras, one on each of our heads, to like heighten the ambiance of fake Michael Jackson. <laughs> and he dances over to us, and he takes the hat off my head, and he whispers into my ear. And he puts the hat back, and he whispers again, and he dances off into the night. <laughs> and everyone is watching us, because we're in the middle of the dance floor at our wedding, talking to a man dressed as the late Michael Jackson. Andy's black. Andy's black, sure. But my relatives know not to stare just because someone's black. <laughs> but we're talking to a Michael Jackson impersonator in the middle of the dance floor, just as my bride had dreamed of since she was a child, I have to believe. <laughs> just every woman's dream. So everybody comes up to me, all my friends and family come up to me when the song ends, and they all have the same question, essentially. Hey, Josh... What the fuck was that? <laughs> what was he doing? <laughs> what did he say to you? Was that advice? Was it wisdom? Was it a quiet, verbal Michael Jackson impression he wasn't ready to go wide with yet? Just like, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Was that what it was? <laughs> it was not. This is what he said to me, honest to goodness. He dances over to us. He takes the hat off my head. He whispers into my ear, 
the hat lights up. Wow. Wow. He hits the button on the hat four, five, six times. The hat does not light up. He puts the hat back on my head, whispers, the hat used to light up, and then moonwalks across the entire room. And that was the second best moment of my wedding. So it was a pretty good wedding. Thank you guys so much. Back to your host. Have a great night. Bye. Yum's the world. 